Let's work through some examples. Pause the movie while you answer these questions. Draw free body diagrams for each of these situations. Let's look at your answers. A car driving at a constant velocity on a horizontal plane. If it's moving at a constant velocity, it is not accelerating. That means there's no resultant force. All the forces acting on this car balance one another out. Vertically, we have the weight acting downward and the normal force equal in magnitude but opposite in direction acting upwards on this car. Notice the car is drawn as a dot and the forces acting on the car are drawn as arrows, as vectors, with their tails on the body, on the dot. And we label each vector. Horizontally, the car is also not accelerating, so we know that the forces acting on it are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. What are these forces? The push by the engine of the car and the friction by the road. Equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. So although this car is moving towards the right, it's not accelerating. And that's how we know that it's in equilibrium, all the forces balance one another. But how about if this car is slowing down? Vertically, it's not accelerating. Vertically, the situation is the same as just now. Weight downward, balanced by normal force upward. But horizontally, the car is slowing. It's still moving towards the right, but it's slowing while it moves to the right. In other words, it's accelerating to the left. Whenever a body slows, then we know that its acceleration is in the opposite direction to its motion. This car's motion is to the right. And since it's slowing, it must be accelerating in the opposite direction to its motion. In other words, to the left. That means that there must be a resultant force to the left. Maybe the car's engine is off freewheeling or whatever and so the only force perhaps acting on this car is friction by the road and so friction by the road is also the resultant force and it acts in a direction opposite to the motion of the car and it causes acceleration in the same direction that the resultant force acts next question we have a skydiver who's accelerating downward so he's moving downward and while he's doing that he's getting faster and faster so his direction of motion and his acceleration are both in the same direction. That's why he gets faster and faster. Things always get faster and faster if the motion and acceleration directions are the same direction. Since he's accelerating downward, there must be a resultant force on him downward. So the force acting downward on him must be stronger than the force acting upward on him. What forces do act on him? Well, obviously his weight acts downward on him. Air resistance acts upwards on him. But we know that air resistance's magnitude is less than weight's magnitude. How do we know that? Because there has to be a resultant force downward to cause this acceleration downward. Last question. The parachute now slows the skydiver. The skydiver is still moving downward, but he's getting slower and slower as he does so. So that must mean that he's accelerating in the opposite direction to his motion. He's accelerating upward. This tells us there's a resultant force upward. His weight hasn't changed, but air resistance must have changed. Air resistance must now be stronger than weight is to cause that acceleration upward, that net force or that resultant force upward. 